When is dancing a protest? When it's bomba. Bomba is a traditional genre of music and dance from Puerto Rico and has made an appearance at many recent Black Lives Matter protests. In bomba, dancing and protest are inextricably linked. Surprise? Once you understand the music, it makes perfect sense. So now that we know Bomba's influence today, let's talk about where it came from. And to do that, we have to go back about 400 years. Last year, our friends from If Cities Could Dance traveled to Puerto Rico and filmed this footage for their episode on Bomba dancing. Make sure you check out that episode on their channel. Bomba was developed in the 16th century by enslaved Africans in Puerto Rico. Enslaved communities would gather to make music using rhythms and dance to express themselves. They told stories, shared news, communicated revolts, and connected with each other. This process of gathering through bomba was known as bambula, a practice of re-remembrance, re-remembering where you came from and your own sense of humanity. In other words, they created culture and affirmed their humanity, and that is a powerful form of resistance. How would you describe bomba to people who haven't heard it before, or who haven't heard of it even? So bomba is the oldest genre of Puerto Rico, tracing back to our African roots. It tells the story of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is meant for healing. It is a, a time-traveling genre. And it's black music. Yes. Bomba's roots largely come from Africa, but like so much of Latinx culture, is a blending of elements from many regions. While most bomba songs are in Spanish, some have words and phrases in other languages, including Haitian Creole and Kikongo. The use of long ornate skirts as bomba costumes also shows incorporation of Spanish influences in bomba today. The Taino were the indigenous people of Boriquén, their name for the island that is now Puerto Rico. That's also the reason many Puerto Ricans prefer the term Boricua. Taino influence in bomba shows up in terms like bate, which refers to the dance space. The use of a single gourd-based maraca also shows Taino influence. The maraca is used to keep time, and is often played by the singer. Guas are sticks, often played against the side of a barrio, or the drum used for bomba. Can you talk about the significance of the barrio or the drum in bomba and like why, why uh, this specific drum is used? The barril, mm -hmm. I would say in Spanish, but in English it's barrel. It's Bam, made yeah. out of a barrel. So it's made out of a rum barrel, cheese barrel, whiskey barrels, like whatever type of barrel yeah. you could think of, it's made from that. That's okay. what we had when for well, those enslaved Africans Ancestors, came, yeah. came from the motherland into the Caribbean. Yeah. And then they needed their resources because they had all these rhythms, so they used their resources that they had. Mm. And what we use on when it comes to the skins, it's goat skin. Yes. So now now we're talking about a type of drum that relates to the djembe family. That, yes. You know, all those African-based Absolutely. Drumming. So, what makes the rhythms of bomba, bomba? First, there are two types of bomba drums. The lead drummer is known as the subidor, or primo, and plays a higher-pitched barrio. The other drummers play a buleador and keep a steady rhythm called a buleo. While that steady rhythm is going, a dancer enters the bate by doing a paseo, walking around in a circle to mark their space, ending with a salute to the primo. One of the most surprising things about bomba is that the lead drummer's job is actually to follow. As the dancer begins to dance, the primo follows their movements with the drum, striking to the rhythm of the dancer's steps. It's a conversation. Dancers use common dance moves and improvisations to express their thoughts and emotions. The drummer watches closely, anticipating, following, and giving voice to their movements with the drum. For the enslaved people who created the music form, bomba was one of the only vehicles they had to express themselves freely and to feel powerful. Reclaiming their sense of humanity and self-determination was an act of resistance. Bomba has a collection of rhythmic patterns, each used for different purposes or emotions. For example, Sika means the act of rising up. Gwembe is to restore balance.
seis corrido is a faster rhythm traditionally played in Loiza. Yuba is good for releasing negative emotions like sadness and anger. It refers to an ancestral ritual of cleansing space and self. You can feel that in the heaviness of the last beat in the pattern. I know Sika, Quimbe, uh, Seis Corrido, and Yuba, but what's the other one you said? Olande. Just hearing it, Olande is influenced by the Dutch. Okay. The way we dance, Olande, is mimicking the slave owners, how they dance. Whoa! So how we dance, Olande, is influenced by them. Bomba lyrics are simple and reflect daily life. Singers also take influence from the drumming and the dancing that they see in front of them. Generally, the lead singer will start singing a short chorus. The chorus is repeated by others as the lead singer adds improvised verses in between. The chorus, the people, the community responds. And then I start storytelling. And so I start talking. So there are some songs that are written, right? But there's also this beautiful aspect of singing bomba where you are just in the zone. You're there. Mm -hmm. We got so many beautiful uh, bomba songs everywhere that, that are traditional, that are written. We also have space to improvise. That call and response format is another example of African influence in bomba music. It's also one reason that there's always a place for everyone at a bombaso, and audience members are often participants. Throughout the Puerto Rican diaspora, there are families, schools, and performance groups keeping bomba alive and passing the art form to new generations. Today, people who practice bomba continue to use it as a platform for awareness, resistance, and pride. Bomba is much more than a dance or a music. It's a way of life. Talk about the significance of, of bomba to you. Bomba is life. Mm. And especially, I was raised in this tradition. You know, I was raised to just one person, definitely influenced by my grandfather. Bienvenido Ayala, but everybody knows him as Benny. Uh, unfortunately, I just lost him uh, a week and a half ago. Oh, wow. So, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah. Thank you. In the Cepeda family of San Juan, one of Puerto Rico's most famous bomba families, the music has been passed down for eight generations, and the Cepedas are known for having created the first bomba school. In recent years, bomba has been a bomb for those suffering from the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. After the storm, people gathered to dance bomba as a way to express their feelings of pain and loss and come together as a community. And now, bomba is an integral part of Black Lives Matter movements throughout the Puerto Rican diaspora. Loiza is a center of afro boricua culture on the island. After the murder of George Floyd, Loiza was one of the first Latin American communities to organize demonstrations. Bomba and Plena were central to their vigils and protests. Why do you think Bomba has been so present in Black Lives Matter movements lately? Is it that authenticity, that community? I feel like there's so much. The reason why we're out here protesting uh, Black Lives Matter is because we are reclaiming our spaces. You know, when yes. we say black, when we say black, there's our Afro-Latinos, Afro-Latinas. There's so much to what black means. This is the music that existed when we were oppressed and we're still oppressed. So this is this is mm -hmm. a way that we need to, to, to stop that oppression and to bring uh, new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. Ah, we're authentically us, beautiful in mm -hmm. our skin no matter the color of our skin. But when we bring bomba, we're talking about black root. Whether traditional or fused with other styles, bomba is a reclaiming of Puerto Ricans' African heritage and a way of countering racism and other injustices in their communities and in the world. What aspect of bomba uh, do you find the most interesting or what, what aspect of bomba music do you uh, respect the most? 
I feel like I came very much into my black identity later than most of my peers, especially being Puerto Rican, you know, Bomba's Puerto Rican, but there's a lot of anti-blackness everywhere, especially though in Latino cultures, and I feel like people don't think about it. But, Whoa. you know, when you think Puerto Rican, you think J-Lo, you think Mark Anthony, you think like, you know, a, all yeah, yeah, yeah. first of all, I'm black, look at me, I'm black, but also, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, this is my culture and I found it through music and so it's like an archive, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's Absolutely. so cool. It felt kind of like when you do one of those ancestry tests and you're like, wow, you know, it felt kind of like that for me. It's just so illuminating. Um, that there are so many people that share these stories and share these histories and like, you know, that yeah. is part of what has made me the person that I am and that's like my, really my history. Soundfield finally has a Patreon where you can support us. Get behind the scenes concert footage and early access to every new episode. Link in the description.